This video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Thank you, KEH. More than a few people have called Nikon's D850 the greatest DSLR ever made. But even if that's true in the age of mirrorless cameras, so what? Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and here's what. First, straight up the differences between the D850 and its closest mirrorless counterpart, Nikon's own Z7 II, couldn't be clearer, so I will be unusually blunt. If you're debating between picking up a new Z7 II for, what is it, $29.97 these days, or a new D850, they're still available for $200 less. If your number one priority is image quality, and if you don't need 10 tenths autofocus performance specifically for sports or wildlife, stop debating. Just go for the Z7 II. A, the Z7 II is a superior image making tool under just about every other scenario. Hold that thought. B, Z mount glass absolutely does offer next generation performance. C, the Z mount is where Nikon will be investing going forward. D, if you are heavily invested in and love your F mount glass, you can always adapt it to the Z mount and it will work as well or better on the Z7 II, even better on the Z9. Yet E, the opposite is not true. You cannot mount Z lenses on F bodies. But second, with this said, one, let's set aside the C9 because it is more than twice the weight and almost twice the price of either camera new. Two, a used D850 in excellent plus shape will cost you a cool grand less than the Z7 II, saving you somewhere between 35 and 40% more as you continue to build an F-mount based catalog versus Z lens catalog. Three, the D850 does have marginally better metering and marginally better autofocus in those scenarios I've just mentioned than the Z7 II, although it has a 30% slower burst rate. Four, new or used, the D850 and Z7 II are functionally equivalent in almost every way, essentially identical for photographers when it comes to resolution, dynamic range, and high ISO performance. And five, some Nikon F-mount lenses are full-on brilliant even today. I've had personal experience with and appreciate the 24 1.8G, but I love the 105mm 1.4E ED. But there are no doubt many other excellent pre-Z lenses. I'll list some of them later on, but please feel free to share your picks in the comments section below. Put differently, mirrorless era or not, shoot the best F lenses on a D850 with the right lighting, the right support, and or VR technology, and you absolutely can get stunning images compared to anything you can get out of the mirrorless arena. Yet the Z7 II is notably lighter and smaller, approximately 33 and 34% respectively. Nikon's Nikkor Z1.8 S primes and 2.8 Holy Trinity S zooms are better than their F-mount counterparts, most notably for sharpness and chromatic aberration correction. The best value on the planet at the moment, I think. Although, don't take my word for it. And... Don't take Nikon's word for it. See for yourself. Although, of course, what I'm sharing with you is just one set of measurements at or near minimum focusing distance with major pixel peeping, with just one copy of each lens which can therefore really only tell you about this particular scenario.
whether or not the differences in chromatic aberration, sharpness, and mirror slap will matter to you are much more a function of what and how you shoot in the real world. But for what we do, this much is abundantly clear. The addition of IBIS and IAF, as well as the fact that the Z7 II has no mirror slap because it's, oh, I don't know, mirrorless, especially given both cameras equally high megapixel count, significantly improve the odds that the Z7 II will outperform the D850 for sharpness either from reduced camera shake or more precise autofocus, especially when using the same F-mount non-VR glass, even better odds using the corresponding Z-mount glass, and coupled with the Z7II's EVF and superior video specs, the Z7 II is a no-brainer choice for the hybrid shooter. Although, I will also assert that EVF shooting for photographers only, that is literally through the electronic viewfinder rather than by glancing at the rear screen or through any reflex ground glass based system, gives one better pre-visualization and more precise exposure control and easier viewing in bright light than otherwise possible. In my experience, once you've tried a good electronic viewfinder, you can never go back. Ditto for IBIS. So let me wrap it up this way. I did not intend to make this a long video. Now that I've had it in hand for a while, courtesy of our friends at KEH, I agree. The D850 is the best DSLR ever made, handily beating every Canon DSLR I've ever laid hands on for ergonomics, color, and dynamic range. It simply would have smoked my 1D and 5D2, topped all but the 1DX Mark III and 5D Mark IV for high ISO performance too. If you need the resolution, the DSLR experience is your happy place. You aren't locked into a different system and budget is an issue. Hey, I'd go D850 all the way. It is that good. Nikon's best AFS lenses will look gorgeous on it and they will be a bargain compared to their Z counterparts or simply when new. Think for example, their AFS Nikkor 400 millimeter F2.8 EFLED VR autofocus IF which was a cool 12 grand when it was introduced in 2014, but it's less than $9,000 in excellent plus shape use. As will, by the way, some of Sigma's F-mount lenses like the 51.4 Art and some of Zeiss's F-mount lenses like the Aposonar T-Star 135 F2 ZF.2. Of course, it's easy for me to recommend KEH to get them, not because they are the sponsor of the video, truly, but because I've been buying from and selling to them now for years. Still, if you have the budget and want next level performance that I think does make a material difference to image quality and ease of use, if your images and workflow demand it. In other words, if you want to extract the maximum potential from 45 megapixels with as little friction as possible. You will want lenses, autofocus systems, and vibration reduction systems designed specifically for 45 megapixels and more. And in that case, I'd absolutely go for a Z7 II based system instead. S-curves, baby. S-curves. The Z system is Nikon's future. The future is already here. And unlike some camera manufacturers, well, just one really, you know who I'm talking about, you can choose from a growing assortment of excellent third-party glass as well. The Z7 IIs is the long-term play. Although, if you're not in a hurry, I might wait to see what the rumored Z7 III or Z8 will bring. Just saying, this video is brought to you by the good folks at KEH. Not only is KEH the oldest and biggest at what they do, buying and selling exclusively used camera gear of all sorts since 1979, but they do it well with integrity and both a 180 day warranty and 21 day return policy, free shipping on transactions over 49 bucks. Which is why, because they make it as futz free a process as possible, they are our go-to whenever we are looking to fund new purchases by selling our own gear or buying that special used piece of kit properly graded and checked 
when we want to go quirky or old school. Check them out using the special links and 5% discount or bonus code in the video description below. Thank you, KEH.